our theme for this month is greater victory, victory by faith. A specific focus today is how to exercise faith. It is continuation of what we have been doing this whole month. Um, our text is 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Praise the name of the Lord. That scripture sets the foundation very clearly that it is those who are born of God that have this victory by faith that we are talking about. Um, so very quickly, I will share my screen and reconnect us with exactly that point. So we are talking about victory by faith, how to exercise faith. And I, I want to make that statement very clear. Again, that faith is a leveler. It brings everyone to a level playing ground. Irrespective of your background, you can achieve whatever you want in life. Because faith is the operator of grace, and it is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you today that you make up your mind as we go through how to exercise faith that you will live that life that you so desire because God has given you the ability, the power, the provision, everything you need to accomplish that desire by faith. So very quickly, um, before we talk about exercising faith, you must have foundation of faith, which we have emphasized com continually, the foundation of faith. And we have thought deeply on that foundation of faith with the acronym BRRBL. BRRBL. Believe, repent, and confess your sins and forsake them. Receive the Holy Spirit of God by asking God to give you the Holy Spirit. Believe that you have received him, the Holy Spirit, and then begin to live by faith and love. That is the L, living, living. So L is living by faith and love. So from that foundation of faith, then you can be talking about exercising faith. It's only those who are born of the Spirit of God that can be talking about exercising faith in God and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and His Word. Praise the name of the Lord. So from there, you can see we are then talking about exercising faith. So how do we exercise faith? Number one, by understanding and applying the three parts of faith. You have to understand and apply the three parts of faith that we have dealt with. And you know the three parts of faith. Faith works, faith works, faith results. Praise the name of the Lord. By understanding and applying the three parts of faith, it involves you then to write down your faith action plan and then to work that faith plan deal. Till you leave it, you leave it. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's in summary, uh, the focus. I put this so that you can grasp this. If you can grasp this, then as we go into the details and looking at examples, it will be uh, practical in your life. I pray the Almighty God give us the understanding in Jesus' name. B R R B L. Believe. Repent. Confess your sins and forsake them. Receive the Holy Spirit by asking God to give Him to you, to give Him the Holy Spirit to you. 
name of Jesus. Believe that you have received him, the Holy Spirit, and therefore live by faith and love to glorify God, to do everything the word of God says. I will stop sharing here and then go back as we continue the teaching. So you have seen the outline. Now, understanding the three parts of faith, which is faith works, uh, faith works, faith works, and faith results. So how to exercise faith? You must first have the foundation of faith, B-R-R-B-L. And then you exercise faith by understanding and applying the three parts of faith, living that life. Faith works, faith works, faith result. Let's look at them together as a few scriptures, for example. So let's start by looking at Mark chapter 11. And we will look at verse 22 to 24. Glory be to God. I read it. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What did you see there? Jesus said, have faith in God. And by faith in God, it says, as surely, as surely. And Jesus' name, one of his names is faithfulness. Hallelujah. He is faithful. When Jesus tells you something, bank it. Bank it. Forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not a jot, not a jot of my words shall fail. Glory be to God. So he said, Jesus is the one speaking. Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, for as shortly, as shortly, certainly, without fail, I say to you, whatever or whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And then he goes on to talk about prayer. So we'll come to that. So you can see here, faith words, speaking saying it, and we have said that don't speak your own word. Speak the word of God. It is the word of God that creates. Hallelujah. You know, in John chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was with God from the beginning. By him, all things were made. There is nothing that was made that was made without him. So it is the word of God, not your word, not my word, not your assumptions, not the assumptions of men, not the theories of men. The word of God. Speak the word of God. Say the word of God. Say what God says. And where do you find what God says? In the Bible, the scriptures, and also by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, as we learned last time in the last teaching. So, faith works. So, number two, faith works. Faith works. You know, James chapter 2, if you read 20, to the end, I believe 26 already gives us the whole description 
that faith without works is dead. But let's look at a quick example. Faith works. James chapter 5, uh, verses 15 to 18. And indeed, we will, we will take all that together. So we'll come to that scripture. So very quickly, faith works. What do we mean by this? We are talking about action of faith that you take. You have to take action. So you have to take action. There are situations that just requires you to speak that word and that is it. And that is the required action. I've said this before. But there are situations that you will speak that word and you continue to speak and to speak and you continue to do and to do and to do. That is faith works. And then faith results. Faith results is the reality of God's word and the tangible manifestation. So if there is no manifestation of these words that you have spoken, I have spoken, and the works that we have put in the actions, it is not complete. Jesus said that, he said, assuredly I say to you, faith will not fail if the understanding of the three parts of faith is applied as it ought to be applied. So faith works, faith works, faith results. We understand it. Faith works, the word of God, right? Faith works, the action that we take because we believe God by faith. Action we take because we have heard the word of God, that God has spoken to us. We've received the understanding by the Holy Spirit. Faith results, the manifestation, because we have lived in the reality of that God's word and thereby bring to manifestation, tangible manifestation, tangible results, tangible achievement to glorify God. Hallelujah. This is the completeness of faith. So, this is the three parts of faith. Having done that, what next do we do? Number two, we write down our faith action plan just what we saw there before. And then number three, you walk daily upon that action plan. Engage in intense prayer, confessing God's word over your life and the plan and the work that you are doing. And you continually take actions as required. You never give up. You never give up until the manifestation has come to be. Glory be to God. So let's look at some examples. Let's look at some examples. Let's start with the example of Elijah that we often refer, uh, like to uh, refer to. Now, so James... Chapter 5 that I mentioned, James chapter 5, verses 15 through 18. Read it with me. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Did you see that? Prayer of faith will raise the sick up, will raise the dead up, even if the person committed sin. He says the prayer of faith will intervene, prevail. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Verse 16. Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So the one who is praying, however, must be righteous. <laughs> Why his prayer of faith can intervene for even the one that committed sin, he himself must be righteous. And that's why we emphasize the foundation of faith. 
when people are walking in sin and are coming to give you miracles, signs and wonders, be very careful about those kind of people. You can develop your own faith. God has given grace, as I said, is available to all of us. Jesus has died for all humankind. All that remains is for you to believe, accept him and apply your faith and get everything Jesus said he has come to fulfill in this world for you and me. John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Let's continue the reading of uh, James chapter 5, verses 15 through 18. We were at verse 16. So now we go to verse 17. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land. For how long? For three years and six months. Look at verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. We're going to use this to illustrate all that we have said about how to exercise faith. I repeat it again. Number one, by understanding and applying the three parts of faith. Faith words, faith works, faith results. Number two, you write down your faith action plan. Number three, you work your plan daily, daily, daily. You work that plan till the manifestation and the fulfillment, even after the manifestation and fulfillment. You continue to enlarge. Don't stop there. Continue to enlarge. You've seen how it works. You do more. You do more. You continue. Glory be to God. That's how to exercise faith. So we we'll illustrate all this using Elijah's example. So here you can hear that Elijah prayed. And there was no rain, rain in the land for three and a half years. And he prayed again, and there was rain. How did he do that? The Bible started by saying, and the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, that's the key. And they said in verse 17 that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. So Elijah was a man like me, like you, who, whom God gave his Holy Spirit. You see the connection now. You see the similarity. God gave him the Holy Spirit, the anointing that was upon him, the Spirit of God. So when you hear that Elisha received the double of Elijah's spirit, some people will say the double portion of his anointing. Go and read it again. He said the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit of God. That's the thing. You are, he said he was a man of the same nature like we are. He had the Spirit of God and he knew how to operate by faith. By the Spirit of God that he had in him. Now, following this, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 to see. Because if you stay there, you won't understand the entire connection, the three parts of faith, how it is illustrated by this example of Elijah. So um, I will take the part that concerns Elijah's prayer for rain not to fall. And he prayed again and the rain fell. And you know, part of the event there involved the Elijah calling fire from uh, heaven and came and slew, the fire came and roasted the captain of the 50s and his 50s. The first time, the second time, and the third time, that one begged. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read chapter 18, verse 1. Chapter 18, verse 1. 
And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Whose word came to Elijah? The word of the Lord. It's always about God's word. This is the key. God's word. Not your word, not my word. It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. And God is always speaking to his children. But many of us don't pay attention. Many of us are not willing and ready to develop ourselves so we can hear when God speaks. This is where you actually need fasting and prayer. <laughs> for yourself, not for all those uh, jumping up and down that oftentimes we do. It is for yourself to bring yourself in line and in tune with the word of God and the spirit of God so you can hear God. God is always speaking, but many of us have not developed our ears to hear, to listen. We have not even paid attention. It's not because there is anything special you need to do. If you have received the Holy Spirit of God, who dwells in you, as the Bible says, our bodies have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Then you have the means of hearing God. The Holy Spirit. He opens our ears to hear. He opens our eyes to see. Oh, glory be to God. So Elijah heard the word of God. And what did the word of God say? Let's continue. He said, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, in the third year, saying, go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. Did you hear that? That's it. God said it, I believe it, and take action upon what God has said, which I have heard, and that settles it. I put it this way. God said it, I hear it, and believe it, and act upon it, and see the manifestation. That's it. God said it, or says it, I believe it, and act on it, and see the result. God says it, I hear it, and believe it, and act on it, and I see the manifestation, the result. So we jump, haven't established what God said to Elijah. After, in the third year, God said, Elijah, now it's time. Go show yourself to Ahab. I've kept you away from Ahab, hit you for three years. Now go show yourself to Ahab. It's time. And let's now jump to verse, uh, let's look at uh, verse 41 to 46, because we want to run quickly. There are other examples we want to see. So verse 41, but I advise you to read the entire first King chapter 18, please. Verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Where was he hearing the sound of abundance of rain from? He heard it, but Ahab, or Ahab didn't hear it. Why? Because God already spoke to him and said, "I go and show yourself to Ahab. By the time you are done with him, all that I'm going to use you to do, I will send rain. So Elijah can speak confidently, having finished with Ahab and these evil prophets, the prophets of Baal. He said to Ahab, now go, for I hear the sound of abundance of rain. 42. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Now, 
Elijah has said what God said. That's what saying what God says. Look at point two. What does Elijah then do next? Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. That is what that James chapter 5 verses 17 and 18 was talking about. That Elijah prayed. Hallelujah. 43. And said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Elijah prayed. The first time I said to the servant, go and look. And there was no sign, nothing. Elijah's servant came back and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Look at verse 44. Then it came to pass, oh, as you persevere in the action of faith, it will come to pass. I remember the testimony of a woman that I read about. She was praying for the husband to be saved. She, was, she had received the spirit of God and has become a Christian. That is like Christ. You know, that's the simple definition of a Christian. A Christian is one like Christ. And also do remember that a Christian practices uh, Christianity, but not everyone who practices Christianity is a Christian. So that you may know, a Christian is one that is like Christ. So this woman prayed that God should save the husband. And God spoke to her and said, your husband will be a great minister of God. I have heard you. I have answered your prayer. And so the woman thanked God and continued to share the husband, to love the husband, despite all that this man was doing to her. And one day, they called her and said, your husband has died. I've forgotten the exact details of the death. And so she wa he was already in the hospital. So they called her that she should come and sign the paper uh, oh. before they moved him into the mortuary. And then the woman came boldly. <laughs> and when she came, they presented the paper to her and she told them, take it away. He is not dead. My husband cannot die. And they were shocked with her boldness. They to she told them, you stay away and let me be with him. And she shut the door. And she got on her knees and said, Jesus, he cannot die. You told me he is going to do great ministry, great work for you. He cannot die. Five hours passed. Brothers and sisters, she was still on her knees. The husband was still dead, like dead stone. Ten hours passed. She was still on her knees. The husband did not wake up. The body has become more cold or colder than whatever it was. Sixteen hours. She was still on her knees. Then suddenly, the husband got up and said, where am I? And she held her, uh, his hand and said, let's go home. I told you, you cannot die <laughs> until you fulfill God's will and open the door and pack the, uh, I mean, and carry the husband away. Glory be to Jesus. Faith in God, in his son, Jesus Christ, and his word. So, verse 44, I read it again. Then it came to pass the seventh time. If Elijah gave up the first time, it will not happen. If Elijah gave up the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, even the sixth time, it will not happen. Action of faith. Suddenly, the seventh time, it came to pass that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand 
rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. So the rain came, moved from the sound to the sign of the feast of a man. And now what happens? It is going to overtake. Look at 45. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then he, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Glory be to God. Wow. Can you see how to exercise faith? Faith word, he spoke. Faith walks. He took the action and persisted continually. Faith resolves the reality of the word that God spoke, which he acted upon, manifested. Glory be to God. With that, I think we are ready. Let me just share one more example, one more example. I think I should share the example of Caleb, Caleb, because I talked about Caleb the other day. Joshua chapter 14, Joshua chapter 14. Let's start from verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh, Barnea. It's always the word of God. Seven, I was 40 years old. Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh, Barnea, to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. There are people who will be discouraging you. You are the one who heard the word of God. There are people who will tell you it is impossible. But I know that with God all things are possible. And nothing shall be impossible to him who believes. Caleb said, but I wholly follow the Lord my God. Nine. So Moses swore on that day, saying, surely the land on that, uh, the land where your foot has trodden shall be yours, shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Ten. And now, Caleb speaking now to Joshua, verse 10. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. 45 years, a man kept the word, the promise that God spoke to him. Since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both to both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Say that with me. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Caleb said to Joshua, give me this mountain. Hear what was in the mountain. Mind you, I didn't say on the mountain, in the mountain. Now, therefore, verse 12, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day now, and, uh, you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. The Anakims were giants. So there will be challenges. But if God has said it, if God has put it in your heart, and you can understand it from the scriptures. God 
will do it if you exercise faith in God, in his son Jesus Christ and in his word. Glory be to God. We continue that verse 12. It says, For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. 13. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. That is how you have Hebron today. The city was not Hebron before. It was the city of the Anakims. But by a man's faith, it became Hebron. Glory be to God. So quickly, your, the exercise now, your own exercise. Let's look at your ex the exercise that all of us are to take because this is practical. We were given the assignment to read Hebrews chapter 11 and distill from there the action of faith that you will take, you yourself will take. So very quickly, I will give you some example and then I will pause. Maybe people have one or two examples to share. You don't have to give us details, just general. In fact, I'm going to test. So you were to read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through uh, 11, and then verse, verses 17 through 35. And from there, see what people achieve by faith. And extract from there, use that to also write out your own mountain. So our title for this practical session we are moving, we, we will introduce today and we will continue next week. And in fact, we will be exercising it every day this week till uh, we come uh, in the next teaching session is give me this mountain. So uh, we call it mountains of faith. Your mountains, of, sorry, your mountains of victory. Yes, mountains of victory, which you have to possess by faith. Your mountains of victory, which you have to possess by faith. So we were asked to write down five mountains of victory. Mountains of victory. So I will very quickly run through this scripture and bring out, so you can understand how to bring out the mountains of victory for yourself from the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. I won't be able to read all. I'll just give you the verses and I'll bring out the a, a, one aspect. There could be many mountains of victory, even in one verse. So i read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony, a good testimony. The outcome of faith is always testimony to glorify God. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Can you see mountain of faith there that you can bring out the invisible things you can bring out the invisible things so what does that mean vision for your life vision vision for your life so verse three that is one mountain of faith you can bring out you can create a powerful vision you see something that is not visible but you can see the invisible by faith. You create a vision, creating my vision, your vision, you create it for your life by faith. So that's what that verse three is talking about. That is the application of it. Do I give you one example? For example, you can create the vision of being a billionaire for God's glory and to serve humanity. That's a powerful vision. A billionaire, not for yourself, not so you know, for God's glory, for that testimony of God, and to help humanity. 
just an example of a vision. There are many other visions you can create for yourself. So if that's verse 3, that is verse 3, you can see how you bring out the mountains of victory. So verses 4 and 5, verses 4 and 5, that talks about righteousness, righteous living. So you can see there, Abel was judged to be righteous. Enoch walked with God, he was righteous, and he was translated. So you can uh, set the mountain of living a righteous life all the days of your life. Some people will say, you know, we are not perfect, and they will continue to sin. No, 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 no. They will say, ah, you know, we don't know. Uh, all of us, uh, it's just by God's grace that we'll be saved. Yes, it's by God's grace. But you know it now. Have you received eternal life by the Spirit of God through Jesus Christ our Lord? If you have received that eternal life, you can live righteous life, serving God all the days of your life, like Enoch. Set your mountains of victory to live a righteous life. Verses 7 and 10. Verses 7 and 10, you can see there, it is for the saving of the household, your family, your family. And you can extend that to community. You can extend that to a nation. You remember a man that prayed. He said, give me Scotland or I die. You have heard the testimony of that man. And he brought revival in entire nation. Verse 11, fruitfulness fruitfulness and termination of barrenness, fruitfulness and termination of barrenness. So fruitfulness here is not just uh, giving birth. So you can look at your life and say, I want to be fruitful in this area, in that area, even in academics, you want to be fruitful in your uh, um, career, in your work. You want to invent things and have breakthrough fruitfulness. It can also sit in vision. So you see how you create mountains of victory. Verses 17 to 19 is victory over death. Victory over death that we talked about. And it also is about fulfilling your days. Fulfilling your days. Fulfilling my days here on earth. Verses 20 to 22, you see the generational blessing over yourself, your children, etc. Your ministry, generational blessing. You can decree a generational blessing over your life. You can set a generational. Oh, I remember reading about the household of Rechabites. Rechabites. You can check it up. Rechabites. The man told his children, he said, in this land that we are living, we are strangers. Don't drink strong drink all the days of your life even when the man died the children did not drink strong drinks they were different they kept the word so much so that when the prophet i think jeremiah god had to tell jeremiah he said you don't know what's going on go and bring the children of rechabite put strong drink before them you are the prophet tell them i the prophet say you should drink strong drink and hear what they will tell you and the prophet told them here is it, drink strong drink. They said, mm -mm 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 -mm. even if you put knife in our neck, we don't drink strong drink. For our father said, we should not drink strong drink all the days of our lives. If a man did that, you can do in a generational blessing, not in conditions, limiting conditions. Put yours in a generational blessing. I remember a testimony of a brother who said in his family, once people reached 50 years, they were dying. When people reached 50 years, they were dying. He gave his life to Jesus Christ before he was 50. Thank God. Oh, no, 40 years, sir, 40. And the day was approaching. He went and prayed. You see the time when fasting becomes necessary. He said, it's, I will not die. It can't be me. He dealt with whatever was in their family. And he came back and lived. And after that, nobody dies again at 40 in his family. You can cause a generational blessing in your family. That is uh, from verse 20 to 22. 
Verse 23 to 29, ministry of Christ, ministry of Christ. Your services to God in the face of challenges, set lofty services to serve God in this life. 30 to 33, you see there, mighty works, miraculous achievements, set some mighty works that you can do. Then verse 34, victory over all evil, all evil. The Bible says there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Then verse 35, attainment of resurrection. Attainment of resurrection. So that's eternal life. Set it for yourself and say, in this life, I will never backslide, no matter what. i rather die than leave Jesus Christ. Great. So I've run through the examples. And now it's your turn. Write out. Don't make it too many. Five. You can always do another five when you have achieved the first five. And you can even update, make the five. When you are growing in it, you can make it bigger. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to hear anything else that anybody picked out. If you had picked out anything else. Or right now, as we were speaking, something has struck you. I just want to give one person or two people a chance to say what they picked out. And then we are going to pray. You are to put down this model and use it. We are entering the practical session. I will also, as we'll be going, teaching on how to develop a strategic plan. Hallelujah. So before we pray, let me see those that are on Zoom. If you have picked anything that you want to share, or those that are on Facebook, you can drop a text on Facebook, and we will pick it up and read your text here right now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Sister Comfort has opened the line. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hi. My brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's thank God for this wonderful opportunity he has granted to us. Making his word simple, easier for us to understand, blessing us with his wisdom. Father, thank you. I really appreciate that uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Moses stood out for me. Glory be to God. Go ahead. Please. The mountain of uh, obstacles. I think the one that really struck me is that Psalms 90. To know, they said that Moses wrote that thing towards the end of the 40 years um, wandering in wilderness. So it could have been as all hope was lost. God has abandoned them in wilderness. But Moses, remember, God, through our generation, you are our home. Generation to generation, you are our God. Our eyes is still in that promise that you have promised us, the promised land. Father, please let our effort be successful. Father, please. Bless the work of our God. Father, you know our life is short, but for you, you have eternity. Remember mm -hmm. your promise to God, to us. Yes. So, and God had Moses. He did not abandon them in the wilderness. He makes sure that he fulfill his promise. So having read and see that, and many other uh, things that Moses did, I think my faith in God has become renewed. Amen. And that Lord, is what I pray. Give me that faith that you give to Moses and many other prophets so that yeah, have, I will depend, I will God. learn to depend, to depend on you and your promises. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. 
Thank you very much. Glory be to God. That is powerful. So we can see how somebody develops mountain of victory. So in verse 23, say, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months. You go on. 24, by faith, Moses, when he became of it, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You continue. Uh, 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt. 28, by faith, he kept the Passover. 29, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as the dry land. He continued. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you for that contribution. Sonny, you, yeah, go ahead. Your line is open. Speak. Make it sharp. Good afternoon, Pastor. Yes, Pastor, uh, I really thank God for today's uh, message. Uh, my focus is on the, the 31st uh, phase of that uh, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 31st, 31. There, the Bible talks about the hallowed uh, woman, Rahab. Uh, what I've seen there in that uh, phase is that uh, through faith, we can obtain forgiveness and mercy from God. This was a woman that was unhallowed, but through her faith in God and his word, she was able to be saved. God never condemned or destroyed her alongside other people that were destroyed. So I have really seen that uh, if we have faith in God, can actually obtain mercies and uh, can also be forgiven of our sins, just like Rahab was forgiven. Indeed, thank you very much. Um, and indeed, that's why we talk about the foundation of faith. The foundation of faith is believing in God and repenting of our sins and forsaking it. Yeah, so that's the foundation. So you're right. That's the foundation of faith is believing in God. Verse 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that God is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we must believe in God, repent of our sins, and forsake our sins. So the Rahab here, as you can rightly, uh, you have rightly said and seen, yes, believe in God, and had faith in God, and she was saved. The scripture here didn't say that she continued in that way. Of course, remember when the land was conquered, she was taken and was now part of the, with the children of Israel. So that's the point to make out of this. Yeah, so there is no justification to continue in sin. If, you, if one continues in sin, that person actually has not exercised faith in God. Faith in God is meant to make you come out of sin because it is believing that Jesus died for your sins and that you have been forgiven and that he has, that he has destroyed the power of sin. So when somebody who, ha, who says, I believe God, is committing sin, that's willful sinning. If the person indeed has come to the place of faith in God, so we must also exercise faith like Rahab did to come out of our halotry. That's what the Bible is actually talking about here. Yes, no matter what our pasts have been, when we come to God if by faith, God forgives us, God saves us. But we are not to continue to live in that sin and say we have faith in God. They don't work together. Living in sin and saying, I have faith in God, it's not true. It is actually lack of exercising faith in that area of walking in righteousness that makes somebody who has known God to walk in sin. Let's understand that clearly. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. We want to pray now then. Uh, I believe the actions are clear. So you're going to write down five 
mountain of victory, which you will overcome by faith. And we will send some follow up on WhatsApp, on Facebook, uh, for us to walk this. The process has been set out. You have your plan. You t continue to work on it. Get the word of God that backs up as we have just seen. Never your word, God's word. And then you continue to pray over it. Speak the word continually. Let us pray. Every one of us thank God now. Uh, you Thank God, thank God for your life. Thank God for the word you have heard. And now tell God, please, this word that I have heard today, let this word bring that change, that transformation in my life. And if there are specific areas of victory you have said before God, tell God, give me victory in these areas of faith, this area, these mountains of victory that I have said before you. Go ahead and pray your prayer now. 30 seconds straight to the point. Father, thank you for this word that you have given to us, given to me. Thank you for teaching me. God Almighty, these mountains of victory, thank you. My faith help me to uh, have victory over every mountain of faith that I have brought before you in my life, my family, in the ministry, in my brothers and sisters, in all aspects of life. Father, give me victory in every mountain of faith, all mountains of faith that I have brought before you and take glory in my life. Father, Give victory to all these, my brothers and sisters and their entire households in all areas of life, in all mountains of victory that they have brought before you. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want to agree with you. Heavenly Father, thank you. I agree by faith in the name of Jesus with all these, your children, that Oh, the mountains of victory that they have brought before you, that they have asked you to grant them victory to their, my Father, our Father, who art in heaven. God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, grant all the requests of your children. Grant every one of us here victory today, victory throughout this morning. Victory this year, 2021. Victory for the rest of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Almighty God bless you and your entire household. The Almighty God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who has surrendered his or her life to Jesus. Anyone that has been uh, uh, um, overcome by sin, that the power of the Spirit of God break that yoke of sin out of your life. Receive that transformation. As you open your mouth and confess Jesus, the power of Jesus, the power of salvation, flood your life. The Almighty God forgive and cleanse every sin, wash you with the precious blood of Jesus, and make your life whole. Receive him, the Holy Spirit of God, and be transformed in the name of Jesus. God helps you to fulfill all his will and purpose for your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God bless you. We want to close here.